Hi, and welcome to this video on how to work with rows uh, with the uh, dynamic syntax and other keywords we have in the system. So, many people uh, have this question often to us in, in support that um, it they're fairly easy to understand that header level fields when you work with them, getting the value and uh, setting the value and so on. Uh, it's quite easy to understand that this is in dynamic syntax item 14 and uh, you need to set that value so we get the dynamic syntax here um, but many people misunderstood um, how to actually work with rows and, and getting the, the different values in the system um, so this video will try to go through the different ways you can work with rows in the system and the first one is the current row um, the current row only happens if you actually do something on row level. Uh, so you cannot really work with the current row from every time you go out of this field or as I ma made here, I made the, the current row just be a button. So uh, if I go to this button, all I, it does is it says current row have the, the quantity and uh, the row is this keyword will give, which gives the active row we are working on. So if I do this on row level, uh, I have a little validation in here that basically just says every time we go out of the item code field, uh, show us uh, this universal function. So if I go out of this field, it will tell me that I'm on uh, it has one in quantity, which makes sense, and it's row one. And if I go down here, it will say it has three in quantity, and it will be working with with row number three. So, and that's because our event is on row level equal. There is a column uh, involved here, so we're actually working on some some column level structure. If I run this same universal function on a header level that could be off the button but it could easily have been on validating or going out of the customer reference field but uh, what we will see will happen is it will say that the current row have one in quantity and the row is minus one uh, so why is this um, well we didn't really want it to break down and give a, a, an error message so we have always chosen to say that if you don't uh, define in this one, in this syntax, what the row you're actually working on, it will, when reading data, just expect it to be the first row. So that's the reason why it says one. If I have 10 in quantity, it would have sent 10. But the row, the special row keyword here, will still give us minus one, indicating you are actually not on a row. And you can use that in order to figure out if uh, something should happen in, in one way or the other in the system. So that's current rows. Uh, current row again only really makes sense when you're actually running on on the, the it on row level. But uh, in some cases, uh, you are you need to work on header level, as I call it, with rows anyway. And there's uh, four different ways of doing it, and I will go to them now. So the first one is what we call fixed, uh, which is a fixed row to run every single time. And if we go in here and have a look at what this does, you can see that I can take the dynamic syntax, which normally ends here, and then I can give it one more value. That is what we call the dot row value uh, in the system. So I'm specifically saying this should always happen on row number three. Um, so if I press the button, it will of course say row number three has a quantity of three, which is correct in my case. This will not always happen. Uh, or being on a fixed row is not really important in such a scenario as we have here, but fixed rows can give much more meaning, for example, in pro properties here, where these are actually rows. And if you wanted to work with property number six, you were actually working specifically with row number six and that's the main reason to use the fixed uh, the fixed row syntax 
else doesn't really make sense to do something like this. And also, if you go on and try to use a row that doesn't exist, in this I only have five rows, and let's see what happens if I actually go in and say I want to work with the tenth row. So if I do that, you will see it will give me an error message saying invalid row number. So you really need to know that that row number you have in here is something that actually exists in the system. If you still want to have a way of getting to a specific row, with, again with heavier level, and you don't really know the fixed number, you have uh, two options. You have the selected and the focused. So the selected, let's have a look at it, is that instead of writing a fixed number here, you, s you write dot selected. Um, and selected means that when some of the one of the lines is selected like this. So I can uh, highlight it in yellow and when I press select it, it will actually work on row number three. If I take this one, it will work on row number four. Again, if we don't select anyone, we default back to, to the first run, so we go back to row number one. So you really need to inform your users if you use the dot selected that they actually need to select something before they use a button. That is depending on that. Else it will just work on the first one. In a similar manner, uh, sometimes you are in systems where you cannot mark this or you're just in the field and you it's this one you want to work with. And that's what's called the dot focused. So right now I have focus in quantity on row number two. So if I press the, this one, it will say row number two. And the universal function for this, let's have a look quickly. It just, instead of dot selected, it will say dot focused. So in that regard, I can be on any of these and press the dot focus and it will give me the row where there is actually some focus in. And as the same with the selected, if you don't really have any focus in any of the lines, it will default back to the first one. So that's ways of figuring out what line you are on. Um, but there's also a case where you actually just need to, instead of just read data of the things, add some more lines to this. Uh, and for that we have a dot last and a dot last minus one uh, syntax. So in my case, I have a little function button here that goes in and say that the item code in the last row, which in this case is 5, should be A0001. That makes sense, it could, it would just put it in. Um, and then I also want to set the quantity. In my case I want to set it to 10. Um, if I put that in last, it would fail, because as soon as I put in A0001, and go out of that field equals to the first command in our macro, it would create a new line. So if I set last for this one, it would begin to work with line number six instead of the, the indicated line number line number uh, five. So that's the reason why we also have last minus one, so you can actually trigger the new line with the first line and set all the additional information in last minus one. There's not no last minus two or anything. It's only for this specific scenario. So if I press my button, it would actually go in and set the last and then the last minus one, giving the fact that six was uh, long now and put in the 10. So that's the reason we have that last as a that row syntax as well. The final option you have working with rows is if you need to work with all rows. Um, so there can be many different scenarios of, of working with, la uh, with all rows. And uh, for that we have an entire module or uh, universal function 
called uh, line loop. So I've set up a line loop here. I won't go into much details on how it works. Uh, we have separate uh, e-learning videos on that, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm looping to my line structure and for every single one of them I run exactly the same uh, universal function as I did with current. So it's exactly the same and you will see when I do that I can run it with all and will say the first row it has row 1, second, second, third, third, four, and so on. So in that regard we are able to run to every single line uh, and, and in that way get the values. But again, if you need all lines, look at the line loop uh, e-learning uh, because there's a lot of things they can do, not only just show data, but collect data, create new data and, and, and launch uh, advanced Microsoft. So with that, uh, that's essentially what you can do with the different uh, rows in the system. Uh, so it all depends on your, your business needs, if you need to current, fixed, selected, focused, last, last month's one, or all, uh, if you want to go through every single one of them. So then, thank you for listening, and I hope it was beneficial.